Cheating dealers have become a serious problem at the CS188 blackjack tables. A CS188 blackjack deck has three card types, 5, 10, or 11. An honest dealer is equally likely to deal each of the three cards. When a player holds 11, cheating dealers deal a 5 with probability 1 4, a 10 with probability 1 half, and 11 with probability 1 4. You estimate that 4 fifths of the deals in your casino are honest, while 1 fifth are cheating. So what are we given here in this statement? We're given that um, the probability, I'm going to use the notation from lecture, which is a little different from the one that's in the probability of plus h is 4 fifth. The probability of negative h is 1 fifth. We're also given that when we know it's an honest dealer, all cards are equally likely. So for honest dealers, we have the probability of the card tell being 11, given that it's an honest dealer. It's the same as the probability of the card dealt being a 10, given honest dealer, equal to the probability of the card dealt being 5, given it's an honest dealer, and it's all equal to 1 third. And the last piece of information we're given is that um, for cheating dealers, this distribution here, over cards dealt when somebody already holds an 11 is different. It's as follows the probability, let's put it down here, um, the probability of dealing an 11 given we're dishonest is 1 fourth. The probability of dealing 10 given dishonest is 1 half. Probability of dealing a five given this honest is one fourth. So that's all the information we're given here. Now we see a dealer deal an eleven to a player holding eleven. What is the probability that the dealer is cheating? Okay, so what we're interested in here is the quantity, the probability of having not honest dealer given that we saw that dealer deal a 11 to somebody already holding 11. So capital D here stands for dealing an 11, deal, dealing a card um, when somebody already holds an 11. Well, that's not a quantity that we're given. We're given quantities of the reverse type of the probability of dealing a particular card given honest or dishonest. So this is typical setting where we apply base rule. Here. This is equal to the probability of dealing 11 given not honest times the probability of not honest divided by the probability of dealing 11. That's just base rule here. Okay, for the top, for the so for the numerator, we actually have those quantities available in the problem statement. The denominator quantity we don't have available, so we're going to extend the denominator. So we keep the numerator because we know we have those quantities available. The denominator we're going to expand. So what's the probability of dealing 11? Well, we'll apply total probability here. So the probability of dealing 11 is the probability of dealing 11 given. It's an honest dealer times the probability of an honest dealer plus the probability of dealing 11 given it's not an honest dealer. And then here again times the probability that it's not an honest dealer. Okay, so this here is applying the law of total. And now we have all quantities that are available in the problem statement, and we can just fill them in. So what are we 
getting here for the numerator. 11 given not h, that's the thing. Not h is sitting right here, that's one fifth. Then the first term in the denominator, 11 given plus h, that's sitting up here, that's one third. Probably a plus h is sitting up here, that's four fifths. And then the second term in the denominator is identical to the numerator, so we can just copy that over one fourth times one fifth. At this point, we have an arithmetic expression involving numbers. So we're all done, because now we're looking at the solution format. Moving on to the second part of this question. The casino has decided to install a camera to observe its dealers. Cheating dealers are observed doing suspicious things on camera four-fifths of the time, while honest dealers are observed doing suspicious things one-fourth of the time. What we're given here is that the probability of seeing something suspicious on camera given cheating dealer, not an honest dealer, is four-fifths, whereas the probability of seeing something suspicious on camera given is an honest dealer is equal to one-fourth. Now we're asked to draw a net with the variables h, b, and c, and write the conditional probability table for this. Okay, so the process we've been modeling here is one where we're denoting whether the dealer is honest or not. And based on that, they will decide what their distribution over cards to deal. And also based on that, we have a distribution over how likely it is to catch them doing something suspicious on camera. So the conditional probability tables for H, going back up here, this is our distribution for H, so four fifths and one fifth. So H, probability for the value of H, plus H, minus H, Four fifth honest dealers, one fifth cheating dealers. Then we'll look at D given H. H, D, and D given H. H can be plus H for honest or negative H for cheating. Then D can be dealing in 11 at or a 5, 11, 10, or 5. What's the probability of these combinations happening? Probability of dealing 11 given is a honest dealer is one third. For honest dealer, all are equally likely. And for a dishonest dealer, probability of dealing 11 when dishonest is one fourth, or 10 is one half, and a 5 is also one fourth. And now we're left with the camera. distribution for suspicious activity on camera given the status of honesty dealer. So the dealer could be honest or not honest. And it would just be caught with suspicious activity on camera or not. Probability of being caught given the dealer is honest one fourth. That was our number here, the real not being caught. E fourth, the dealer is honest. That's the probability over here. The real of being caught is four fifth. And then so the real of not being caught is one fifth. And the assertion made by the base net. This is actually a little bit of an ambiguous phrasing. I'm going to say, I assume. By your net structure. Okay, so we're going to answer the question list all conditional independent assertions made by your base net structure. The base net structure, the base has just three variables. And for these three variables, for the three variable base net, we've analyzed all the conditional independent assumptions that are made by the structure. It's the common cost structure, and we know from covering this in lecture that there is exactly one conditional independence assertion being made by imposing the structure and it's the assumption that D is independent of C condition on H. Moving on 
down to D. What is the probability that the dealer is honest given that he deals with 10 to a player holding 11 and is observed doing something suspicious? Okay, so the quantity asked for here is the probability of the dealer being honest plus H given dealer deals with 10. And is observed doing something suspicious as plus B. Okay, so we can write this out as follows. Okay, we can write this out as follows using the definition of conditional probability. With the probability of all these things jointly being true, so plus H equals 10. Divided by the probability of the evidence variables is equal to 10 and plus B. Okay, the top part is a full joint instantiation that we can read off by multiplying the quantities in the initial probability tables together that are consistent with this entry. We'll try this out. To probability of plus h times the probability of b equals 10 given plus h times the probability of plus b given plus h. Now for the denominator, we have to sum over several entries in the full chart table. One of the entries is the same one as in the numerator. The other entry consistent with D equal 10 and plus C is the one where the dealer is not honest. We write out the same thing for dishonest dealer. So now all we're left with is quantities that are available in our basement conditional probability tables up here. And so let's look at the problem statement again up here. You may write answers in the form of arithmetic expressions involving numbers or references to probabilities that have been directly specified. Are specified in the initial probability tables below or are specified as answers to previous questions. So all the quantities we're left with are in the initial probability tables here. At this point, we're done. If you want to solve the real-world problem, you have to fill in these numbers. 